Hi, I'm Dr. Tan Hon Lin. I currently specialize in gastrointestinal cancers, including liver cancer. I'm working at the National University Hospital. I've been um, working in this hospital for the past 10 years. Let's start with L, liver cancer. What is liver cancer? Liver cancer is cancer that um, arises from liver cells. There are several different types, the most common being hepatocellular carcinoma, where the cancer develops from the most common type of liver cells called hepatocytes. So next up is I for increased chances. What increases chances of developing liver cancer? Commonly, liver cancer develops in livers that are damaged by long-term diseases or chemicals, leading to hardening or shrinkage of the liver, a condition called cirrhosis. Worldwide, the most common cause of or the most common risk factor for liver cancer or hepatocellular carcinoma is hepatitis B or C infection. Otherwise, heavy alcohol intake over long periods of time also damage the liver. And there's also a condition called NASH, which is short for non-alcoholic steatohepatitis that is due to a buildup of fat over time in the liver, leading to inflammation and again cirrhosis. Next up, we have V. V for various signs and symptoms. Early liver cancer often doesn't have symptoms or they could be quite non-specific. Some symptoms may include weight loss, loss of appetite, tummy pain, tummy bloatedness or swelling and sometimes they may even feel a lump in the tummy. Okay, these are quite non-specific and doesn't necessarily mean that you have liver cancer. More often they are linked to other conditions but if anyone experiences such abnormal symptoms, they should see their doctor. So next is uh, E for evaluation and diagnosis. What do we do to evaluate and diagnose someone with liver cancer? When the patients first come to see us, other than asking them about their symptoms, we would examine them particularly uh, over the abdomen or the tummy where they may be feeling discomfort. Liver cancer is usually diagnosed by doing scans, including CT scan or MRI scan. We also do blood tests and in some cases, we do biopsies, which means obtaining a tissue sample to look under the microscope to confirm the diagnosis. Finally, R, R for recovery and treatment options. Ideally, every patient would be reviewed by a large group of medical professionals. This is what we call a multidisciplinary team. This would include uh, doctors from various fields, including the radiologist that looks at the scans, the surgeons who review and advise if surgery is an option, hepatologists to help take care of the health of the liver, and the medical oncologist as well. So there are many treatment options available. Uh, this includes surgery, either removing the tumour itself, or some patients may even go for a liver transplant. There's liver-directed therapy, and there's also systemic therapy. So surgery, um, just removal of the tumour itself, tends to be reserved for patients with limited tumour with good general health. If the tumour is localised but patient is not suitable for surgery, we can consider liver-directed therapies. There are several forms of it, including ablation or embolization. Sometimes um, with embolization, there is chemoembolization or radioembolization, where basically there are chemotherapy or radioactive substances tacked onto uh, microbeads that are then injected into the bloodstream supplying the liver tumour. In so doing, we hope to have the tumour uh, control. And then the systemic therapy, which includes targeted medications in the form of pills or immunotherapy that comes in the form of an IV drip. It actually depends on uh, the extent of the tumour at diagnosis, whether or not you know, the tumour can be completely removed. Um, typically, if the cancer is advanced and has spread to other areas of the body, then um, our aim of the treatment really is to try to control the tumour and try to prolong life. But in that situation, uh, we are unable to actually cure or get rid of all the cancer. Within the hospital, yeah, our medical social workers are very helpful in providing psycho-emotional and psychosocial support to our patients as well. I think out in the community, there are definitely other support groups that we can turn to.